Welcome, welcome. I see a lot of people, uh, 138 people online right now. Welcome. And uh, uh, just before we bring on Kathleen, just wanted to check uh, how, how many of you are uh, a Beyond Insights graduate already. Press uh, type one, type one on the chat. And if you are new to Beyond Insights, uh, you, you are not a student of Beyond Insights already, uh, please type two on the chat so that we know. All right. Hey, Tracy, good to see you here. I thought, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay. Many of our graduates here. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, I believe many of you uh, know what's going on in the market right now. Uh, it's basically a challenging market, right? Challenging market because of so much that is going on. You know, the world is still recovering from the pandemic and then uh you know we are hit by this this war uh started by russia uh against ukraine um and there's this pressure of inflation right and there's shortages shortages of a lot of supplies now we're talking about shortages in food supply even um so yeah a lot of pressure tension in the world right now um and that has caused some anxiety, especially for people uh, investing and trading in the stock market as well. Um, but as Kathleen always say, right, she has this quote, you can always find the certainty in within the uncertainty, right? No matter how uh, volatile, how uncertain the market is, you can always find the certainty in which you can act upon. All right. And uh, that, that, of course, comes with knowledge. And this is what this uh, today's session is about. Kathleen is going to share with you uh, how she see uh, what's going on in the in the world today, uh, how it affects the stock market, and you know how you can use that information right to make decision on your action. Okay, so because we don't want to be paralyzed by fear, isn't it? You know, um, we want to be able to do something uh, in the current situation uh, to our benefit. Right. Just remember, you want to write this down. You know, you can always find certainty in the uncertainties. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, let us uh, bring on uh, Kathleen. Uh, she has a lot of, to go through with you in this uh, short one hour. Uh, please do interact with her uh, actively. Engage with her on the chat. All right. Over to you, Kathleen. All right. Uh, thank you, Terence. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Great. So, uh, let me check some of the. Uh, responses so far okay great yeah so uh good afternoon everyone uh so welcome to all our students as well as uh for those of you who have not joined uh, beyond insights uh i actually going to have a market update for all our students in uh, uh in june uh this is an early update this is a one hour session whereas our students quarterly update is going to be a three hour uh, sessions yeah which will have a much more uh, in-depth content but i thought uh, we do not want to wait until another month because the uh, market is very dynamic uh, so this will be good sessions for you to get a quick update first. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of things happening in the market right now, and I'm sure there's a lot of anxiety. Uh, so one of the reasons we want to give an update right now is because uh, there's an early reversal, as I post in our students' uh, Facebook group. Right. Uh, there's an early sign, early sign of trend reversal in the last two weeks already. Okay. But of course, uh, a lot of you feel uh, unsure, right? Whether this is the right time to invest versus uh, trade, uh, trend trading or you know swing trading. Of course, uh, intraday traders can trade you know on a daily basis, right? So I will cover the uh, two parts. The first objective of this session is to share with you the latest stock market update. The second one is to identify the key opportunities and risks. And uh, last but not least is to help uh, new and experienced investor or traders to overcome the fear of the current market uh, volatility. Uh, if you have traded long in enough, you will face a market like this, right? This is an extreme market, right? Having, having traded for 29 years right now, I've seen many extreme conditions. Uh, but this is one of those years where we have a combination of uh, very different events happening together, yeah, compared to what I've experienced in the past. Uh, example, the um, Asian financial crisis, or the US financial crisis or Europe crisis. Uh, for those crises, just a monetary stimulus can help a lot. Uh, that means the Federal Reserve uh, print money that can help to recover the economy because it is caused by a uh, 
consumer spending, right? Lack of consumer spending. So you just need to pump a lot of money to the market. But this current market is uh, different, right? It has war, it has a supply chain constraint. So I'm going to share with you more about the, the differences and how we need to navigate this market differently. Okay. Because if you don't overcome your fear, you will also miss out the opportunities, right? Okay, so the key focus of this session, I'm going to divide into two parts, right? It's only a one hour session, so I have a lot to share. And uh, I'll leave some time for Q&A yeah, towards the end. Yeah, So I'll probably spend about 45 minutes to 50 minutes on the presentations and another 10 minutes on the uh, the Q&A. Uh, if needed, I can extend a little bit more. Yeah. So on the left side, I'm going to cover the current major market concerns. And uh, towards the end, what can we do about it? So what is the major market concern right now? The major concern is actually high inflation, right? It's affecting the, the uh, whole world and it will impact us as well right, as a consumer. Second part is uh, slower growth and uh, recession risk. Okay, I will talk about this more in detail later. So this is the gist of the problem. But what is the root cause of the problem then, right? So when, when why why do we have the when we have high inflation? What happens is the central bank will raise interest rate, okay, to control the inflation. So when they raise interest rate, then it's also going to make uh, borrowing costs higher. And when the borrowing cost is higher, what will happen? Yeah, I like you to participate and start to think about it. Even if you don't know the answer, just uh, do your best to respond, right? Yeah. When the central bank raise interest rate, how would it impact the economy? when the central bank raise interest rate. If I'm talking too fast later on, right, do let me know so that I can slow down a bit. Yeah. When the central bank okay, raise interest rate too fast, how will it impact the economy? Uh, I'm not sure whether the response on the Facebook Live is slow. I'm not seeing any refresh here. Uh, yes, com very good, Nick. Yeah. Companies pay more for their loans. Yeah. And that means the... Um, the cost of the business as well, right, is also going to go up. Your uh, property loan is going to go up. Your car loan is going to go up. Like, so the uh, cost of living is going to go up as well. Yeah. So there's a balancing act that the central bank need to do, right? On one hand, they need to control inflation. Yeah. They cannot just let the inflation go, you know, sky high uh, because it will also impact the uh, overall affordability, right, of the uh, residents. So they need to control inflation, but at the same time, they do not want to end up in a recession because when you increase interest rate too fast, right, it will slow down the economy. When it slow down the economy too fast, then it will become a recession. Okay, so that's a difficult balancing act that they need to do right now. Yeah, so later I will talk a bit more when I uh, go through the central bank uh, update for the different uh, major economies. So what the central bank can do is raise interest rate as a primary uh, tool. But on top of that, irrespective of the current situation of the world right now, uh, the central bank has already planned to do a balance sheet, what we call a balance sheet reduction, right? In layman term is reduction of money supply to the market. Uh, because due to the COVID-19, there's a lot of money being printed, right? This money are still in the economy. And that's why the stock prices has been going so high for the last few years, right? Since the pandemic, especially. Uh, so this cannot stay on for too long. It need to contract the money supply. And this is also negative for the market. Um, so I will share more about this, uh, where a lot of these expectations of the reduction, to me, is already baked into the market. Okay, It's not something that you need to worry too much about, mainly because uh, the central bank already uh, laid out how they plan to do it. Okay. Of course, the most uh, unpredictable one is the uh, Russian-Ukraine war, okay, where we don't know when Putin is going to stop the war. So this could end up one year, two years, or even longer than that. And whether it will contain just within Ukraine or it will expand beyond that, right? So there's a wild card there um, that is uh, unknown, okay? And this can cause uh, some of the region to be in recession, okay? And of course, we still have the COVID-19 uh, residual impact. And this is impacting China um, more than other countries because they have a you know zero COVID uh, policy, right? They want to control uh, the uh, COVID uh, spread yeah, in a, uh, with a very uh, tight uh, control. And this actually impact the supply chain. So I'm sure a lot of you have read some part of this. Okay, So this is a, the bigger picture. Uh, those other uh, risks like, you know, US and uh, China uh, trade war as well as, you know, an attack war, 
as well as uh, China and Taiwan tension, they are there, but they are not so significant right now compared to all these that I mentioned. Uh, those will still come back eventually, right? Not something that we should be concerned yet for the next one year. Uh, because Joe Biden and uh, Janet Yellen, right? Joe Biden is the current president and Janet Yellen is the treasury chair. Um, his, Joe Biden already said that when Janet Yellen come back to the US, they will start discussing to loosen up some of the tariff for China. And this is one positive uh, for the market. We don't know how much they are going to loosen it. And that can help the uh, to relieve some of the inflation. Okay, so this is the big picture and I will cover the, the details on each part of this. Okay. In terms of what we can do, I'd uh, like to share in summary, based on all this uh, update, what are the major upcoming opportunities and the risks that we need to manage this year and beyond, yeah? this year and next year primarily. And the potential scenario planning. Example, what is the impact if there's a prolonged high inflation? Uh, so how do we handle right? I mean, I mean, that's assuming the supply chain constraint is still there and the war is still there. That Then we will have a prolonged high inflation. So how do we handle this uncertain and volatile market condition if it happens? On the other hand, we also want to, you know, take advantage of the opportunity if, you know, the war subside or the supply chain constraint get loosened, right? Yeah. So we don't want to miss the boat as well. So for the current one year, right, the next uh, half a year or so, what would be the better fit strategy, right? And then we talk about as we go through the future updates, I will cover more on uh, what should we do for next year onwards. Yeah, because the market is still very dynamic. It's too soon to, to talk about too long this year, <laughs> too longer than uh, this year. Of course, I will share with you the projected economic growth for uh, the next three years. So let's start with the first part. I'm going to go through this uh, section by section. Let's start with high inflation, right? How high is high? Uh, so this is the inflation trend uh, since before year 2000. You can see that most of the time it stays around the center point is two, right? 2% 2 inflation. This is the central bank target for the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve is the US central bank, just like the equivalent of uh, Bank Negara in Malaysia. Uh, they want to control the interest, the inflation to around 2%. Why not zero, right? So people may say, why not zero inflation? Uh, zero inflation is not good. Uh, then, then the price of goods uh, doesn't go up. It also means a very slow economy, right? So 2% is a good balance. When it shoot up too high, it means things are too costly for people, right? A lot of people may not be able to afford, right? Uh, it could be from the normal buying of uh, food, right, to, uh, you know, the cost of transportation to the cost of properties. Okay? And now you can see that it's actually shot up uh, pretty high to eight. Uh, the good news uh, in the last one week is there's one. Um, there are many indicators that are monitored by the Federal Reserve, right? On in terms of measuring the inflation. So one of it is called the PCA, a PCE, uh, personal consumption uh, indicators, and uh, it actually shows that it has actually slowed down, right? The growth has slowed down. So we may see a, a peak over here, right? Unless the uh, um, China supply chain constraint uh, is not going to be relaxed. Okay, the war is still ongoing. To me, the war impact is already factored into the market. Okay, whereas uh, if China prolong the supply chain impact, that could cause a uh, worse uh, uh, inflation. Okay, so what we like to see is the ongoing indicators to be showing uh, at least a plateau, right? I mean, peak, then slowly coming back down then you will see the uh, higher chance for the market to recover. So this is actually one very, very important indicator that we need to monitor. Okay, for all our students, you should know that this is actually uh, already in the Forex factory. Yeah, if you attended our macro insights course, right, then you will see the whole list of the uh, inflation indicators monitored. Uh, but if you are new or uh, fresh, then you, I mean, you have still uh, beginners, then you just look at um, uh, the indicators called PC. Yeah, later I will share with you on this if we have extra time here. Yeah. So let's look at uh, Europe as well. U Europe is quite similar to US. You can see the inflation is also jumping very high. Uh, this is ECB. ECB stands for European Central Bank, right? Uh, they also target an average of 2% yeah, uh, inflation target, but now it's shooting up sky high. Europe is actually impact, uh, being impacted more because they're very close to Russia. They depend on a lot of uh, their uh, oil and gas from uh, natural gas from uh, Russia. Okay, so later I'll show you the country dependency on this. Okay, so for this to come down, uh, it has a major uh, relationship to you know how they will handle the Russia import. Okay, then let's talk at uh, look at the overall 
um, big problem of inflation, right? So I show you uh, several major commodities here. On the left-hand side is oil. So you can see the during the COVID-19, uh, which is around here, right? This is the uh, year 2020 dip, right? Because during that time, oil, oil price actually dipped a lot yeah? because a lot of planes cannot take off. People are, you know, being locked down at home, right? So this is a period we have the MCO. Um, so oil price came down a lot yeah, because of less demand. So after that, as the market recover, a lot of uh, commodities, when they go up down too low and people expect the economy to recover, then the demand will come back in. But what caused it to shoot up over here, uh, especially from here onwards, is because of the war. Okay, this is because of the war. So that's a, so you can see from you know, the bottom of uh, you know, 20 over dollars right now is uh, close to 140. Uh, 140 used to be the, the peak in the past. Okay, so we are seeing the peak is very, very close already. Yeah, yeah because they're likely going to have more profit taking by then. Uh, the other reason is uh, US itself, right, uh, less impacted by this, mainly because they have oil reserve. So Joe Biden can, uh, he can have the discretion to release more oil to Americans. But this does not solve the Europe problem. Okay, Europe still depends a lot on Russia. Uh, because it's more costly for them to build a pipeline from US to Europe compared to a pipeline from Russia, which is already existing. There's a pipeline from Russia to uh, a lot of European countries and also for the natural gas. Okay, so this problem for Europe is much harder to solve, even if uh, US and Canada is willing to export more oil to them. Okay, So it will stay high uh, for quite some time as long as the Russia uh, and Ukraine war is there. Okay, Then same for the natural gas. There's a lot of dependency on Oh, sorry, a lot of dependency on Russia and coal. Yeah, these are the three main exports for uh, Russia. You can see the uh, this is going to affect energy is being used uh, in many many different sectors, especially transportation. Okay, although originally uh, we have the you know the COVID nineteen is subsiding, right? So we should see the market recovering, right? People are going for travel and so on, but with this. Uh, oil and gas price going so high, it also increased the travel costs as well, right? And that's may slow down some of the demand. You can see that some of, how many of you have uh, look at the airplane prices? Huh? I mean, the um, travel ticket, okay? Is it going higher or lower? <laughs> Anyone knows? Okay, yeah. In fact, the air ticket cost is actually going higher, yeah, because partly contributed by the oil price increase as well. Yeah, and because some countries are still having lockdown. Okay, so I have a question from uh, Chi Kwan here. Is it possible to control inflation by increasing interest rate when inflation is caused by cost? Uh, yes, in the raising interest rate does not solve the supply problem, right? So one of the important uh, this is a bit more advanced uh, into the macro, uh, macro uh, insights. The Federal Reserve or Central Bank can solve a demand problem. They cannot solve a supply problem. Okay? What do you mean by demand problem? If people don't have enough money to spend, to buy stuff, then the Federal Reserve can just print money. They can lower interest rate. Okay? They can pump more money to the economy or they can lower interest rate to make it more affordable. Okay? So that's something that Federal Reserve can do. Right, that's what they do during the uh, 2008 US financial crisis uh, and also the COVID-19 crisis. Right? And it's, it's demonstrated to be uh, already proven to be effective. Uh, same for Europe during the 2010 to 2012 Europe crisis. Right? And that's also uh, because of uh, financial related. Okay? Not a, not a, it's a demand related, it's not a supply constraint. So they was also able to recover the Europe economy. But right now, it's a combination of the not just demand. Demand is actually there, right? Because the uh, U.S. employment uh, unemployment rate is very low. Right? A lot of people have jobs, right? But the problem is supply. When it comes to supply problem, the Federal Reserve cannot uh, don't much have much tool to do it. Okay, uh, this is have to rely on the government. Okay, so there's uh, two things in uh, the macroeconomics. One is called monetary policy monetary policy, which is what the Federal Reserve have control over. The other one is called the fiscal policy. Okay, Fiscal policy is what the government need to do. So in this case, it's within the control of China government. Okay, So it's not China central bank, China government. It's Xi Jinping and his team that decided to have a zero COVID policy. So if they relax that, then the supply chain constraint 
can be solved more effectively. All right. So remember this, there are two. Uh, monetary versus fiscal policy. Okay. When it's a supply side, it has to be the fiscal policy. Yeah. All right. Hope that answers your question. Okay. So uh, just hold on. Uh, my mouth disappeared for a while. Okay. All right. So this is the energy price uh, search. You can see here there's uh, the Europe side as well as the US. So when it comes to natural gas, look at the, uh, the graph here. It's very different between the uh, US, right? This is US versus the Europe. Yeah, because they have a gas pipeline from Russia, right? That uh, is impacted. Okay, US not impacted so much because they have reserve. The next one is on other commodities. Okay, other commodities. So you can see uh, wheat, fertilizer are the most impacted. So you can see, and I was just teasing, uh, we were just talking about this too, among the coaches, uh, the, our, even our raw chanai price will go up, okay? Because, and our bread, uh, because the wheat price uh, is going up. Uh, since the since early this year, January 2022, wheat price has gone up to gone up by 90%. Is that significant? 90%. Okay. So hope our bread price won't double so soon, yeah? And fertilizer, that, that will impact a lot of the plantation sector. So what is the majority impact will be food prices. Okay. When it comes to oil, oil and gas increase or coal production, right, all those energy related, um, if people don't travel, they don't need to spend so much more, right? Although it will still affect some of the import prices. But when it comes to wheat and fertilizer, it's a major concern yeah, for uh, the overall economy because for those countries that cannot afford too much, a poorer country, they will feel a lot. Right, there may be world hunger, okay? Because it's already in, at the current level, there's already world hunger. So if this persists, right, uh, then we have a lot of social problem as well. Okay, of course there are others like nickel, uh, maize, right, palladium, aluminium, and so on, uh, that increase, but it's not so significant. Okay, so how would it impact uh, us in general? Like you think, right? I just mentioned a bit on the food prices increase. Right, this is part of the inflation um, that will be more pervasive amount right so when it comes to discretionary spending like travel if you don't travel it's fine right? this one is uh, our daily food okay so let's move on okay so now that i cover the uh, uh the inflation uh, status like let's look at where is our economy right now are we in recession yet okay, or are we going to have a recession right so this is the latest uh, economic cycle yeah this is uh, from fidelity so you can see that US, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, and UK, these are the major economies. They are they have already passed the growth stage. Okay, growth stage. But this stage is also part of the growth. Huh? Yeah, this is a mid phase. This is still growth phase. However, it's slower growth. Right. So this is uh, important to note. Huh? Slower growth means still growing. But when it comes to late stage, then it will slow down further. Okay. So it's currently it's still okay, right? still manageable. But China is already in a recession mode. Yeah, because the GDP growth is very, uh, is already negative. Yeah, they have been slowing down. Yeah, what what is recession? Recession is two consecutive negative GDP growth. Let's say originally your growth is five percent last quarter, and this quarter is four percent. Right, that's already considered negative growth. Yeah, and then next quarter, let's say three percent. Right, so it's already considered a recession. Yeah, uh, that means the uh, the decline uh, from last quarter to this quarter is a decline, and from here to next one is a decline. Then it's considered recession. So China need to do something about it, okay? And they already plan to do, just that the policy are not so effective so far because they want to balance with the COVID-19 uh, spread, okay? If not because of that, um, it would be more effective. Okay. All right, so why is China slowing down? I want to show you, um, this one I updated in the last quarter update for our students. I just want to recap some of it. Okay, so China still having, as of now, still having a zero tolerance to COVID-19. Uh, but they have started to realize the, the big impact to the economy, right? So I'm sure you know, earlier they were still pretty stubborn, right? Now, now they already feel the impact and they know that they need to take more aggressive action to recover the economy. Later, I will share more updates on what China is doing moving forward. Um, they have a lot of travel restriction and lockdown, more than other countries, restrict manufacturing output, severely affected many services sector jobs, okay? So this is one of the major ones that caused the supply chain constraint. Yeah, because they are a key manufacturing uh, supplier for a lot of the companies from US, right, including uh, you know Intel, AMD, Nvidia, Apple, and so on. Yeah. The next one is their green industry policy. 
right? They want to halt, yeah, that means uh, reduce the carbon emission by 2030 and net zero, right? Zero, uh, what they call non-clean industry by 2060. And this is a pretty aggressive target for, for such a big country. Okay. And coal, uh, which is considered a uh, not clean industry, okay, contribute 40% of the China energy consumption right now, yeah, as of now. So what does it mean here? Right, because coal uh, is under major constraint right now, yeah, because Russia is one of the major, uh, one of those uh, major coal producer, and that will impact China inflation as well. Yeah. Uh, but if they are able to reduce this, then they are less dependent on Russia. Okay. So they also abruptly reduce the electricity generation on the coal-fired power plants, right? Uh, sometimes by twenty percent. So this causes the manufacturing disruption. Like, and also further impact the supply chain. Uh, the next one is tighter regulation on property sector. They have uh, a major problem in the property sector. Yeah, so some of you may have heard about the Evergrande problem. Uh, so the government is worried about a chain reaction. Yeah, where, because uh, they don't want to see something like the U.S. financial crisis, right, which is a housing crash uh, in two thousand late two thousand seven. Uh, so they want to take a more aggressive uh, action to prevent that. Yeah. So what they, they have is they set some ceiling on the um, uh, the leverage, right? That means the debt level for the property developer. And of course, by having a less debt, what will happen, what will impact, how will it impact the developer? I'd like you to think, yeah? If the developer cannot have more debt, how would it impact them? Yeah, just type on the chat. I'd like you to participate. I'm not sure whether there's a slow response when it comes to Facebook Live. I'm not seeing the response as fast as I... Yes, Kathleen. See, because yes. the last update is 326. Uh, now it's yeah, yes, Kathleen. Uh, usually yes. Facebook Live uh, responses are delayed by a few minutes. So okay. just take that so into I'll account. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I won't wait for that. I'm, I'm too used yeah. to Zoom Live sessions where I get an instant response. Yeah, yeah so they uh, when the developers... Uh, don't have the luxury of uh, getting more loans, right? Because they have to maintain a certain debt to the asset ratio. They cannot expand as fast. Okay, so that will slow down the property sector. And what will happen if they slow down the property sector? Okay, you say, I don't know the spoon feed. <laughs> so, so later on, you get better and better at the macro. Yeah. What happened if they slow down the property sector? Yeah, it will slow down the overall economy because property has a big chain reaction to the whole economy, right? So when you buy a property, what else do you need to buy? You know, just type on the job. When you buy property, what else do you need to buy? Everything that you <laughs> inside the property, right? Your furnitures, you need to get uh, people to renovate for you. That will include transportation when you move house or delivery goods to your plane, uh, to your place and uh, all the electronics goods, right? Your fridge and so on, your TV. Uh, so there's a lot of things that uh, people need to buy, okay? So when property sectors slow down, it will have a major impact to the overall economy as well. So that's a, uh, one major uh, challenge in China right now. Okay. You can see that when the US lower the interest rate a lot, it stimulates the housing market. Right? So, and, and that's where it actually has a, a lot of significant impact to uh, help the US economy to recover after the US financial crisis. Okay. All right. The, so the downturn in property sector spill over to you know uh, steel, cement, right? All these home furnishing appliances uh, industry. Okay? So those companies will be impacted as well. And you know in China, uh, they have a very thin margin for a lot of the manufacturing firm. Right? So they need to have a huge revenue base in order to afford that thin margin. So this can get some of the companies into um, you know financial trouble as well. Okay, and. On top of all the above, right, China also has one major impact on the regulation on the big tech and online platform. Okay? So some of the online platform are blacklisted, right? Because um, especially the online education company, uh, I've mentioned this in the last update, right? Uh, like EDU, TAL, they dropped by more than 90%. Okay? So I would say don't touch China stocks, right? I've already won this uh, quite some time, a few quarters away. Because uh, US, there are two problems here. One is, uh, the U.S. Security Commission right, plan to delist a lot of the China company that doesn't comply to the U.S. auditing standards or if they are suspicious of being related to the China government intervention. 
okay, this tool itself already uh, can impact many companies like Baba, Alibaba, you know, Baidu, and some of the um, EV companies, right? Because definitely you know these have China government intervention, right? So they have high risk of delisting. So a lot of the big funds which used to invest in this company already to offload. Right. So you can see sometimes you see it going up a little bit, then they offload, going up a little bit, they offload. Right. So uh, so some of the retail traders, retail traders are people like us, right, versus the institution, right? Institution want to offload. Some retail trader thought it's cheap and they go and buy. Okay, so you need to be beware of this risk. Okay. Uh, and online education is because they want to make education free, right? It should not be chargeable at a high fee. Uh, this is part of what they call a, a common prosperity, right? It's one of the major um vision for China, major initiative for China, which going back a little bit to the communist concept, okay, common prosperity, so everyone can afford, uh, especially education. So those education companies which used to have huge margin, right, they no longer have that luxury. Uh, they also have more data protection. Act. When they have all this, what does, how do you think it will impact, how do you think all this will impact the companies in China? Okay, data protection law restricts, uh, okay, they also restrict some listing on overseas market. Okay. How do you think it will impact that? Okay, one of it is the cost will go up, just like when US have a stricter data protection act, can you see that uh, Facebook have to hire 20,000 people just to enforce the data privacy? Okay, just to make sure that uh, uh, they comply to the government rule, right? Otherwise they get fined. Right? So same for China, it will increase a lot of the cost for running uh, these uh, like especially um, Weibo, right? Those um, equivalent of you know the the China company that are equivalent to Facebook and Google and Twitter and so on, right? Which is the uh, we have those listed in Hong Kong as well, WeChat, uh, Alibaba, uh, and also uh, uh, those owned by uh, uh, we have Weibo, we have Douyin, right? So many of those, yeah. And restrict by restricting some of the listing overseas also reduce the capital that they have yeah, for expansion. So and this this regulation, which is more unpredictable, right? The China government can do anything, and it comes pretty abruptly last time, uh, caused a lot of the investor uh, confidence, right? Impact a lot of the investor confidence to invest in China stock because you could have a high risk when China government have a new regulation coming in. So uh, always when you have lack of institutional investor, it's very hard for the stocks to take off. Okay, so that's the major update from China. Uh, so what will, um, what can cause a change is when the economy slows down too much, then China government has no choice, right, but to slow down on some of this uh, policy here. Okay, so I, I've already shown this uh, previously in the earlier updates, the China economic growth rate right, has dropped significantly. And now they have a target of 5.5, right? For this year, 5.5% GDP growth. And Li Keqiang, right, uh, already says that very uh, high chance they cannot meet the figure, okay? That means they already missed the expectation of uh, what is needed to make sure that China don't go into um, a, a economic crisis, yeah? Okay, all right, so that's the, the China update, um, which, uh, what are the two major problems right now right, that's caused by China, okay? So one of the, I, I'd like you to write this down right, so you can learn better and better on this uh, macro impact. Uh, I, I find that the final, don't, don't let all these um, uncertainties right, impact you. Huh? I, I find these are all very interesting stuff to, to understand. And once you understand, you know, you will be able to manage uh, all this in the future. Because anyhow, even if you don't trade in the stock market, right, this can also impact your job. Do you agree? Okay. You know, because if it causes a recession, people will start to reduce headcount. Okay, so it's good to understand what's going on. So one of it is China. Uh, China is one of the second largest country in terms of consumer spending. As a continent, as a region, the the top is US. The second is Europe as a region. But when it comes to individual country, China is the second. So if the affordable if the economy slow down, means the affordability for China residents go down, right? So that means the American companies that we are investing or trading in, right, will have a lower revenue. Understand? That's how it impacts the stock market fundamentally. The other part is it impacts the supply chain, right? So even though the US economy is doing well, however, they have demand, but there's not enough supply, right? So let's say for AMD, NVIDIA, uh, or Apple, right, they may have orders, but they don't have enough uh, 
to deliver. Just like when last year I shared that uh, I ordered a Lenovo laptop, X Lenovo Extreme, and it took five months to deliver. Right? If I've gone into, let's say, their Q1 sales, right? But now it has to go into the Q2 sales or Q3. Okay? They could have sell, let's say, 20, 30% more, but now the sales go down. Okay? The other one is the uh, Russia, right? Russia, uh, AMD, and NVIDIA. Right, uh, they are not selling in Russia anymore. Right, so uh, partly because of the influence from the U.S. government. So that that would impact a couple of percentage points to their sales. Same for McDonald's. Like six percent sales are from Russia, and they have to they are looking at exiting the Russia business. So how long will this business be impacted? It could be another. Uh, it will be for the whole duration of the war. As long as the war continues, that means a lot of the companies, right, not just in U.S. but other countries, they will have to write off the. Uh, Russia sales and also the Ukraine sales. Ukraine sales may not be so significant, but at least the Russia sales. It could end up between uh, 5% to 10% of that, okay, which can be quite significant to, um, you know, by right, that should be, a uh, that could write off the growth of the company already. Uh, let's say original, their revenue is supposed to grow 5 to 10%, but because they write off Russia, become zero. Understand? That's why a lot of companies uh, are having slower growth. All right, so let's look at the impact of the Ukraine war, right, to the growth of the country. So this one was a very good study that I extracted from uh, OECD. Uh, so this is specifically on the Ukraine war, okay? Uh, doesn't take into consideration of other factors, right? It's a simulated, huh? that means it's just a what-if analysis. Uh, the impact to Europe is more, that means it cut the their original GDP by 1.5%. Yeah, GDP is the gross domestic product, which is uh, how you measure the, in layman terms, is how you measure the income of the country. Okay, if you don't understand all these technical terms, it's fine. Huh? Just assume it is uh, how much it impacts the economy okay, of the Europe, OECD, and US, right? So we are more concerned with US. So we have close to a 1% impact to the growth of US, okay? and the rest of the world is uh, higher, 1%. Uh, the impact on inflation. You can see that the impact on inflation to Europe, it increased Euro inflation by 2%, okay? and the world by 25 but US is not so much, uh, mainly because US are uh, also one of the high energy producer. Okay? All right, let's move on. So these are the, the main impact uh, that I want to share in terms of uh, the supply chain constraint as well. Right, the next one is another big problem, which is the uh, money supply contraction. Uh, it's going to begin in July. Oh, sorry, in June, based on the last uh, Fed update. Okay, but the good news is they already mentioned how much they want to reduce, right? And I'm um, look at based on how much they want to reduce, as a percentage wise to the total market cap, it's not so significant. And a lot of it since January this year, right? People already, I mean, from end of last year to January this year, a lot of the big funds already anticipated this, right? Because they know that the Fed already gives some hint to reduce the balance sheet. So that's why there's a market sell-off uh, from January onwards. So the market is this low because of the money supply contraction. The drop in January and February has nothing to do with the war. Okay? It's because of money supply contraction and the um, expectations of a uh, higher interest rate. Only February onwards, right? late February onwards, is caused by the war. Okay? So this is... Um, so this one, I will say, not a big concern right now. But for next year, if they start to get more aggressive, uh, then it's a problem. And I don't think the central bank want to do this too aggressive. Okay, um, mainly because they already have a big problem, right? If they increase interest rate and they reduce money supply, then it will cause a demand problem again. Okay, so uh, I, I will say leave this for now. Uh, but every time they, they do an update, I think US is okay because they already announced what they want to do. So we want to see whether there's any surprises coming from Europe. Yeah? As you can see here, the biggest money printer is the Fed. Okay, Let's look at this, right? The Fed, which is here. Right Next is the European Central Bank. Okay, And then the Bank of Japan. Okay, So it depends on how fast the rest of them contract. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the uh, COVID-19 status. I'm just going to go through this uh, very quickly. Okay. The good news is the daily new cases, uh, this is global COVID-19, is actually uh, dropping. Like, although there's a, a little bit of spike here, but overall it's still dropping. Right? Malaysia is also dropping. The death rate is also dropping. Right? So it's something for us to celebrate. Okay? So are you happy about this? So who is planning travel already? Okay, okay so the, the tricky part is on China, right? but it's also showing a good trend. They have a spike. Yeah? You can see it's flat almost zero for many, many years. Then there was a big spike. That's why they was very concerned. But look at the recent data. It has been dropping. 
Okay, so that gives more room for, but this dropping was because of very tight policy, right? So when they loosen up, it may spike up again. Okay, so but the good news is at least it's trending down. That gives the China government some leeway to relax, yeah, their, their strategy. So uh, I want to share with you this uh, data here um, on how much is the supply chain caused by a China lockdown. Okay, so there was a port lockdown in the early March here. So all the way to 30% when they start the full lockdown. Okay, so uh, the average shipment volume has gone down by close to 30%. Yeah, that's why we have so much supply chain constraint. And let's hear from Josh Soros. Huh? Josh Soros is one of my, uh, I would say, one, one of the role model that uh, I like to read about uh, because he, uh, because I like macroeconomics, right? So uh, especially related to the stock market and uh, read a lot of his books to gain a lot of the insights, yeah? Uh, and also his talks. So this is what he say about China lockdown. Okay, he says the um, uh, China's deeply declining economic activity would fit into global slowdown unless Xi, Xi Jinping uh, reverses the course. So coming on top of the real estate crisis, when after the real estate crisis, the damage will be so great that it will affect the global economy. That means whatever China do is going to affect global economy because of the disruption to supply chain. Right. Global inflation is liable to turn into global depression. So he said, if China doesn't solve the supply chain issues, we will have a global depression. Okay, so that's a so we need to watch out for what China is doing. Uh, I'm sure China knows what's the problem, right? And uh, there's a meeting coming up, a very important leadership meeting in uh, October. So Sisimi has to do something, yeah, to to make sure that he has a better uh, support, yeah, to continue. Uh, the good news is U.S. is in a better shape than the rest of the world. What do you think is the reason? Uh, I'd like to test your understanding. Why U.S. is in a better shape compared to other countries? I need Terence to help me see uh, any of the chat earlier that I need to ad address later because uh, there's a delay so I cannot uh, wait for it to respond here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So later I will share with you some some data on that. Okay. So the so now I covered the uh, China supply chain constraint issues. So I'm going to uh, briefly go through the central bank update. Okay. So why do I want to cover those first uh, before central bank update? Because the central bank is going to react based on what they monitor in terms of inflation and supply chain constraint. So I'm going to up, that's why I update you the inflation uh, rates as well as the supply chain constraint. Of course, the Russia war also contribute to the uncertainty, right? So these are the three things the central bank will monitor. So this is a reaction to the economic uh, uh, status. Okay, so you don't monitor just a central bank action, then you'll be too late. All right, so the first one is the Federal Reserve. Okay, Federal Reserve uh, uh, is the US central bank. So this is the latest update uh, early May, okay, which is they will raise interest rate by half a percent point, 0.5%. Uh, and likely they will continue in every of their next meeting, right? 0.5 increase, 0.5 increase, 0.5 increase. So initially, um, people were expecting, I mean, people were worried whether they will increase by 0.75%, okay, 0.75%. And uh, if they do that because of too high inflation, then there'll be a negative reaction to the market. So during the last uh, FOMC meeting, they actually say this. Uh, so if you look at the bottom, indicate raising 0.75% basis point. Uh, 75 basis points means 0.75%. Okay, so it's just the way they uh, say it. It's not something. It's not something. The committee is actively considering. This is the most important sentence because I was listening to the uh, Q&A. Right, there is a FOMC meeting on the Thursday, usually, our Thursday 2 a.m. After that, they have a Q&A sessions with uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, for one hour, usually. Uh, then th th he will be bombarded with a lot of questions to see what is their plan for the future. Because whatever they announce in the minutes is already the past, okay, what they are going to do. Uh, but the future is where people are concerned. Are you going to get more aggressive? And this statement helped to recover the stock price on that day. But on Friday, it came back down because of uh, other reasons and not because of the this FOMC. Yeah. So the this is where they talk about they will reduce the bond holdings by 95. This is the money supply contraction. 
And to me, this amount is manageable. Okay, how do I look at that? I take $95 billion, I divide by the total US market capitalization. It's a very small percentage. Yeah, that means uh, what, what do you mean by total market cap, right? If the people, um, if we take on the entire entire reduction, divide by the total market cap, it's not going to hit like 50%. Right? That means if you take out all the, uh, if you look at it at this rate, right, the market is not going to crash. Yeah. So this is a very gradual uh, decrease compared to what the stock market is worth right now. Okay. In a more layman terms, I cannot go too technical here because these are quite advanced topic. Okay. Okay. So that's the Federal Reserve. And the, the good news is why US is in a better shape is their unemployment rate is very low. Okay, this one I updated in our past um, update before, and there's just a slight change. Um, this is where the current unemployment rate is 3.6. It's very low, it's all time low based on year 2000, uh, 20 over years, like right? 22 years plus, right? Because before the US financial crisis in 2008, the unemployment rate was 4.5. Okay, for unemployment, we want it the lower, the better, right? And before the pandemic, okay, COVID-19 crisis is 3.7. It's considered very low right? because there was a healthy economy. And now it's 3.6. So what does it tell you? Is US economy healthy? That means people have jobs, right? When they have jobs, they have money to spend. Okay, what we need to worry right now is a wage growth, right? That means if the there are a, a lot of people being employed, right? They may start demand for higher pay, especially when the... Um, when the inflation is high. So that may increase the cost of a lot of the companies when the wage growth, right? So you may start to see the impact uh, probably in the next couple of quarters where some of the company's profit margin may shrink down a bit. Uh, if they, Apple already announced an increase in pay, right? That's the, already a sign coming in, uh, early sign. Yeah, how many of you read the article? Apple uh, increasing pay, yeah? Because of a high inflation in US. And people were saying, right, will U.S. go into the recession? I've read many articles on, on that as well. Um, uh, also from the U.S. Federal Reserve side as well as on uh, independent commentary. And I agree with those uh, views as well. Uh, is low chance for U.S. to go into recession. Okay, I want to test you why. It's related to this slide, okay? I'd like you to think, not spoon feed. Why it's not easy for US to go into recession, even if the Federal Reserve have a high increase in interest rate? Yeah, one of the main reasons is healthy employment, right? They are not raising interest rate in a um, an unhealthy market. Okay, so people have jobs. So demand will still be there. So as long as demand is there, right, they can afford the higher prices. Okay, but the people who suffer well are the people with lower income. Right, so that's the, the US side. So US is in the battle shape. Europe, not so much. Okay, Europe inflation hit the record high 7.5% last month, four times the their target of 2%, right? And so the central bank, this is the uh, European Central Bank chair. They said they will start increasing in July. Right now, Europe has a negative rate. Huh? Their current interest rate is negative 0.5, whereas the US is one, yeah? Negative 0.5. Uh, I won't want to explain why that's negative interest rate because it's a bit technical. Huh? Yeah. So what they want to do is to start increasing in July, another two months. And by Q end of Q, uh, Q3, they want to exit negative interest rate. So what it means is uh, they may end up from negative 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.25, then to zero. Right. That means they exited negative interest rate. Okay? Then they may start to slowly add. Uh, for the Europe region, they have to take more precaution because if they do it too aggressively, it will cause a recession. Uh, because not all the economies in the Europe uh, that well off. For right? example, France and Germany are in better shape and UK are in better shape. But the rest of those countries can end up in a recession if they're not careful. Okay? Because the ECB uh, have to take care of the overall Europe. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, one of it. And why do, we, why do we need to look at Europe Central Bank? Okay, for two main reasons. One is Europe is one of the second largest economy by continent, consumer spending. So if they go into recession, then it will affect the sales from the US uh, uh, companies okay, that are highly exposed to Europe. Uh, then the second one is uh, they're also one of the biggest money supply provider other than the US. So we also want to track what the central bank is doing. Yeah. So uh, we actually have a, a, a group of coaches, right? We are monitoring uh, various of these indicators. Okay. 
All right, the next one is England, okay, because they're of Brexit, they're already out of the Europe. Uh, they already started hiking interest rate, right? They don't have to get consensus for the, the rest of the European Committee, right? So they see inflation hitting 10% higher than the Europe. Okay? So they are increasing, they are taking the base rate up to 1% right now, okay? Increasing by 25.25% uh, every time, right? So let's just show you that all the countries, uh, major economies are increasing interest rate gradually to control inflation. Then uh, China Central Bank update, okay, as of May 9, yeah, this is a more recent one. They, this is the good news, okay? They said they will step up support for the slowing economy while closely watching the domestic inflation, right? And they will also monitor any policy adjustment needed, okay? Uh, and uh, they will also keep liquidity reasonably ample, prioritize stability, and take steps to boost confidence. Okay, so this is... Uh, where there's some slight positive. However, the problem is so far, whatever they are doing doesn't last too long to impact the market, right? It's just slightly, they have to take more aggressive step. And one of it is to solve the supply chain problem. Okay, so we need to look for this news. Uh, if China start to relax the COVID-19 control, then we'll see a positive rebound in the US stock market and also the global market. Right. So now the next one I want to share with you is moving forward, right, from uh, next year onwards, right, are we going to see a recession or major slowdown? Right. This is the IMF, International Monetary Fund, uh, uh, projections yeah, on the uh, GDP growth. So you can see that it, you can treat as economic growth for the countries, right? So the first one, U.S., uh, for all the countries, expect a slowdown. So you can see from 2021, because just recovered from COVID, right? So there's a big surge here to 3.7 to 2.3. 2.3 is still a growth. Okay? Um, but the if you look at the Japan also, right? This year already quite slow. Huh? Yeah. Uh, UK, UK dropped even further because they are closer to the uh, Russia economy. Okay, so you can see anticipated a slower growth for US. When you see this, right, don't look at it too negatively because a lot of the slowdown usually are already factored in the stock price unless it's a new one. So how do I read this is um, beginning of the year, they will have a figure. Let's say beginning of the year, I, I cannot remember the actual figure. <laughs> I have it in my own slides. So let's say originally they project 2.6, okay, beginning of the year. But then later they announced to become 2.3. That's where the reaction to the stock market is will be there. So now they expected 2.3, right? The market will have reacted unless they, they give another forecast. So the impact won't happen next year. The impact will happen when they announce this. You understand? Because the stock market react six to nine months ahead of the economy. Okay, not when you see the actual. The moment the announcement come in, the stock market will factor that in already. So unless there's worse condition. So if next year is not so bad, we have a supply chain con uh, constraint relief off, then you will see a bigger growth, yeah, a higher growth. Okay, so what we are concerned is more on the US economy. Then when it comes to China, is uh, even more concerned uh, this 2022, sorry, 2022 and 2023. Okay, you can see this year is very slow. China used to have more than 6% um, GDP growth. Yeah, and the, at the peak is 11.2%, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Uh, that's during the Olympics time. <laughs> okay. So now it slows down to this and they expect to bring this back up. Yeah, hopefully this materialize because that will help a lot of consumer spending. So there's still some good news here. Okay, you can see Russia going negative and further negative. They said the uh, the currency is almost uh, worthless already. Okay, so the rest of it, you don't have to worry. Okay, so that's all for the main update. So now the most important is what can we do about it? Okay, current and upcoming opportunities. Uh, okay, so the high inflation environment, I actually covered this in the last batch of the Growth Investing Express course. Yeah? So I showed the, the bubble, the pie chart on uh, how to allocate the money. But uh, a lot of the students who didn't refresh may miss this out. Uh, I plan to update in the next Q2 market update in more details huh? because here we have students and non-students. So the most important is we think inflation will persist for quite some time, right? as long as the wall is there, as long as the supply chain constraint is there. Okay. Typically, commodities is not a good investment. Yeah. So if you look at oil price in the past, they doesn't go, um, they doesn't stay stay up too far. Okay. So let me just uh, later I will show some charts to prove that. Yeah. But it's because of the current situation. 
um, commodities become a good investment or for or trend trading for a short term. It's not a very long term investment because the it depends on the supply chain constraint. Okay, it also depends on the Russia war. So once this subside, then there will be a adjustment to the price as well. Okay, but for the meantime, at least I think for the next one year. Okay, I, I want to put a disclaimer here because uh, we don't have investment advisor license, so we cannot advise on what stock to buy. Okay, I can give you the general trends. Yeah, uh, we are educators, so I can educate you on the process. I cannot tell you buy this or buy that. Okay, I will violate the. Uh, the uh, the license uh, we have education license not investment license so um how do you invest in commodities right there's a few ways one is uh, you use the uh the etf like x uh there's a few one right xle is one of them right xle is the etf it's a fund which energy stocks right so it has companies like uh, exxon mobile chevron which is the biggest composition within the xle so these are uh, this consists of companies Traditionally, the profit margin is low because oil price has been going down a lot. But now, oil price uh, is going up, right? Has gone up for quite some time, so it improved a lot of the profit of this company. Okay, so but they still doesn't meet a lot of our Beyond Insights uh, criteria on strong fundamental. But you can trade it as a trend trade. Okay, the other one is the DBC, right, and the DBA, right. These two are additional. Uh, ETF that you can use, right? This one is an agriculture, agriculture ETF, right? This one is a combination, combination of uh, it has oil, oil and gas inside, and it has agriculture, okay? Oil and gas and plus agriculture, agriculture. Okay, so if you don't need to learn about futures, then right? if you know futures, then you can buy commodity futures, but that's more technical. Uh, and the uh, the price of uh, one contract is actually high compared to the cost of buying a unit of stocks. Okay, that means you can also, if you know futures, then you can buy uh, oil futures, wheat futures, okay, corn futures, like those that are still in constraint right now. Okay, so this is an easier way for beginners to buy. Uh, I would say that it's good to include this uh, definitely in your portfolio. Okay, uh, but the price has gone up a lot, right? So you need to wait for pullback. That's what we taught in the trend trading class, right? Make sure that the uh, you wait for a pullback. Don't buy when it's already so far from the support. The second one, which is happening recently, the valuation of many growth stocks has dropped significantly, and some started to have a trend reversal early stage. Um, I'll show the chart, but volatility will still persist. We don't think it's going to be a strong uptrend. It's going to be a temporary recovery until the next resistance. Yeah, I will show in the chart. However, you can start trading this range, right? Because when it comes to a certain range, the stock become very um, affordable. Okay, is a uh, the valuation is low. That would uh, in that would attract a lot of the fundamental uh, value investor to come in. Okay, so you will find the support is that. So you just trade that range. Yeah. Uh, SPY and QQQ. SPY represent the S and P five hundred index, the top five hundred stocks, and QQQ represent the a lot of the high growth stocks, right, in Nasdaq. Uh, already showed stage uh, early stage trend reversal, and also because of China economic support. It says the stock market bottom up. Um, uh, it's actually originally I was waiting for the EMA two hundred okay uh, to to see the real bottom. However, the the last two weeks have already shown sign of reversal, uh, mainly because they see the inflation indicators start to plateau. Yeah, plateau peak okay, and uh, China showing si uh, some signs that they need to really get more aggressive on the economic support. Okay, so people are seeing the positive development. Stock market usually bottom down, right? Bottom, I create a bottom when a lot of the negative news already factor in. Okay, most of the negative news already factor. It means uh, if uh, balance sheet reduction, aggressive interest rate hike, then they realize that moving forward it will be slightly better. Uh, that's enough to have the market bottom. Okay, I'm already seeing sign of that. Doesn't mean that things cannot fall again. Huh? So what can cause it to get worse? I will have some <laughs> notes uh, below this. Okay, so it's uh, already very, very close to bottom recovery. Okay. Then China economy support. China leaders pledge more support for the slowing economy. We also have uh, more demand surge coming up. Travel restriction will uh, has been lightened up in uh, many countries. So you can go to this kayak.com.my to look at which country you can travel. Right, so this, this will help the service sector. Okay. On top of that, um, 
you still need to monitor the wall, right? If there's any positive progress, right, then the stock market will search. Okay. Even the slight chance of uh, Putin, you know, say that he's not going to get so aggressive on uh, Ukraine, uh, ideally when the war is going to end. Okay. Uh, this may not happen so soon. I don't think it's going to be this year. Okay. Get my, my mouse disappear again. Just hold on. You see my just a minute. Huh? There's something happening to my mouse here. Okay. All right. The mouse doesn't want to come down to the window that I'm showing. Okay, I'm gonna use my keyboard first. Let's see the um the Russia Ukraine war. Uh has already been priced into the current market, right? So, I mean, the, the war price impact to the current market is likely already factored in, but sanctions impact may persist until end of the year. So what it means here is some of the sanction may not, sanctions may not be announced. What are sanctions, additional uh, tax or tariff or restriction uh, of export to Russia, okay? Or import yeah, from countries. So uh, let's say the US government may restrict uh, import from Russia. That will affect the Russian economy, okay, or they will tax the import more. Same for Europe. Okay, they may decide to reduce the import from Russia. Okay, uh, when that happens, it will have a more significant impact to the inflation. Okay, this is a lot of it has been expected unless they are doing more aggressive, uh, more aggressive sanction. So the key risk here, if the war is prolonged, which people already anticipated, is not it's going to last at least more than a year. Okay, so anything that is more like more or less expected to me it's already factored into the market okay unless it's unexpected what is unexpected not really totally unexpected but people don't see as that likely yet but when it's announced right that's where the confirmation is which is if the war extends beyond ukraine i think that will be the uh one of the major negative case for the market to go down further if the war extends beyond ukraine uh, that means to other parts of europe hopefully that doesn't happen but I just want to share with you that will be one of the worst case scenario. Uh, and that will affect um, all the, it will affect uncertainty for the global side, right? And it will bring down the consumer demand in Europe region as a whole. Okay. And also the inflation will continue to go up. Yeah. Uh, so when this happens, the most important is what China is going to do, right? So you have one part where you have short of demand, but if China can recover, it can at least balance back the trade-off in Europe. Okay, a, a significant impact if the war persists, right? The biggest impact will be the Europe economy. For the rest of the world, will be oil price, right? Coal price and all those uh, export from Russia. Um, but the main the main impact will be mainly Europe, okay? And some part in China. But if China can relax the, their policy on the COVID, then uh, it may balance back. Uh, on that area. So if both are having problem, that's where it's going to be hard for the stock market to take off. Then what do you do then, right? So later I will share uh, in a short while. Okay, so let's look at the what will be impacted if Russia continue to have a war or worst case war, right? The This is look at, look at the uh, main export. We have uh, crude oil, right? petroleum products. These are all the energy related. Then they have machine and equipment. Right, then the other one that is uh, all these fuel related, all these are energy related. So we have coal and wheat, right? So this is where the where the wheat price go up, uh, aluminium, okay? And fertilizer, this affect the plantation sector. So those countries that import the most uh, on these elements are the one that will be impacted more in terms of the inflation, okay? All right, so this is to share about this point on the Russia side. The next one is I want to talk about this part the valuation. So I have this chart. This chart shows the historical P ratio, which is a way to look at whether the stock market is expensive or cheap. Okay. It's a simplistic way. It's not very accurate, but it's not very accurate. Okay. Because there's some assumption behind it. Uh, but at least it's the easiest uh, indicator we can use right now. So if you look at the P ratio, usually um, it goes, it's below 25. Okay. It has back up a lot during the uh, U.S. financial crisis here, as well as the COVID-19 crisis, okay, because of too much money being printed, right? So the stock market elevated, and now it has fall back below. 
So that means the stock price right now is pretty reasonable. I wouldn't consider that as uh, very cheap because there are so many sectors involved, uh, but it's considered a very reasonable level. And some of the stocks uh, really go back to as if the money, there's no money printed. Okay, that means even if the balance sheet reduction happened, all the whatever money printed taken away, right? Uh, the stock market has gone back to that level before the money are printed. Okay, for some of the stocks. So that's why I think there's a lot of good valuation stock right now. But I won't suggest that you go in straight away. Okay, so this is what I'm going to share. What can you do moving forward? Depends on the investment or trading style. If you're an investor, then I will suggest a combination multi-asset policy. Huh? Multi-asset means you invest some in commodities, right? Some in the growth stock that has been penalized, right? Those that shows bottoming and early recovery. Okay, not those that still below the downtrend line, still going down, okay? Those, uh, something is still not right there. Uh, so one of the important part is if the oral market recover and the stock you're monitoring is weaker than that, something is not right, right? Don't go for that and think that it's cheap, okay? Please write this down, okay? So if the oral market take off, if it's a good stock, it should take off faster than the oral market. Make sense? It should take off than the oral market. So this is one way you can judge the weaker or stronger stock. If it's not taken off, that means there may still be some concern for those stocks to take off. Like whether it's from, it has a more significant impact from supply chain. Uh, and one of the good area to look at is, um, if you want to start investing early, right? Which other stock that will not have such a high dependency on supply chain? Which sector do you think it is? Does not have as high dependency on supply chain. Because once you have a high dependency, even though it's take off right now, right? Um, when it gets worse, the supply chain, then it will drop back again. So which one? I'm going to pause for count five before I answer. <laughs> which is still pretty good price right now. Yeah, software is one of them. Okay, software is one of them. Yeah. yeah because they just need to distribute electronically. <laughs> okay, they are not impacted by... Uh, the only thing is, unless they run off server to expand, okay? for example, Microsoft uh, or Amazon um, infrastructure right, for cloud computing, uh, if they need to expand, right, they need to buy server, then server under supply chain constraint. But to deliver their current service, uh, there's no issue. Okay, So even if you have another X number of people joining the cloud, it right, may, may not be a problem to them. Yeah, software is a good one. Uh, services industry likely to recover, right, as the travel open up, like travel open up. Um, so what else? Like the, the tech sector, right, within the tech sector, you need to break it down, like software versus non-software. And those that has a high impact to China, you need to watch out more, okay, because of the supply chain constraint uh, from China, right? So they will be more volatile, they will go up, down. But I think it will travel, it will trade in ranges, okay? So I'm going to... Uh, go to that part. All right, so if you are very new to Beyond Insight, so I hope uh, this is a bit technical sharing, okay, because I want to go through more depth than the usual uh, standard uh, free seminar that we have for the public, yeah, because there's a mix of our students here. Um, and the goal here is to help you with, to get some certainty uh, within the uncertainty. If you are too fearful of what can go wrong, then you will miss the, the good deal. So for those of you who have not attended uh, Beyond Insights courses, right, uh, you can join our next uh, our free webinar, which is a three-hour session on how you can start off as a beginner or even an experienced student right, uh, in terms of learning about investing or trading. Right? We have long-term investing costs. We have mid-term trading, that means you keep for a few months, and we have short-term, which is you keep for one to two weeks, and also intraday, yeah, which is, uh, you don't keep anything overnight which is the best solution for now, right? It's now, right now, if you are fearful of keeping positions overnight, then you just uh, trade for about two, three hours a day, then you don't keep it overnight. But this is a more advanced level trading. So you need to start from beginnings first. Okay, so you, if you're interested, you can click on this link uh, on our website, uh, sorry, on the Facebook right now. Uh, and I will share some uh, charts moving forward. Okay, so this is the, the link. Um, the next, next program is, we have the most experienced coaches. Uh, we have uh, 29 coaches to support our students. We have the most effective support and we have a very comprehensive curriculum here, they can see. Yeah, all the way from all the trading style, long-term, mid-term, short-term and intraday. We also have options course and I also teach advanced courses. Uh, we teach advanced courses on going deeper into the company, understanding of the company, understanding the industry, industry trend and also macro insight, which is 
uh, what I taught you today, but we go much deeper than that, okay, to understand the overall uh, macro effect. Okay, so this is, uh, and we have uh, already uh, achieved many awards. Okay, so that's uh, what we have. So now I'm going to cover some charts and also some Q&A. Okay, so it's a bit extended time, so I hope you all can stay back for a while. For those of you who are new, uh, you can start with this, uh, which is something more beginner's level. Okay, this, this one is a bit advanced level on the market update. Okay, you don't have to understand every of the terms here. Just get a feel of the overall concept. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you why I think the market is recovering. Uh, I removed all my lines uh, to keep it simpler. Okay, can you see my screen right now? Uh, okay, I need to do a separate sharing. Can you see my my chart? Okay, I see yes. my screen. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to uh, share with you where I see the overall market. I'm going to go through, yeah, this is a weekly chart. I'm going to start drawing the lines from scratch again so that there's less lines for you to see. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, for those of you who are newer, this is a free charting software from TradingView. Okay, so can you see this? This is the pandemic low. Okay, pandemic low, COVID-19 time. So it went as low as this level. Okay, then there's the pre-pandemic high. Okay, this is a pre-pandemic high. Okay, so if the money supply got reduced, okay, all the way to before, right, this is where a lot of the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank start pumping a lot of money, right? <clears throat> Total more than $26 trillion. So it caused a big surge to the stock market. Uh, that's why I say when you want to uh, invest or trade, right, be involved in the stock market, you need to see the big picture. Okay, don't see it short term, right? This year market is volatile, you can get discouraged. But there are also good times like this. Okay, good times like this where the market surge by so much, right? Almost double. Okay, some of the stock even triple. And there are also good times like this. Right, can you see? Yeah, so this is some of the dip, but if you look at the overall, the market spend. 70 to 80% of the time in uptrend. And it's only 20% of the time you have a major down like this. And when you're major down, there's also opportunities, right? If it, there's nothing come down, there's no opportunity. So as long as you follow our rules on putting a stop loss, so it's automated when it goes below certain level, it cuts for you, right? Yeah, so you don't have that overnight risk. Uh, I mean, you don't have the anxiety of further dip. Okay, so based on this, originally, uh, I was looking at potential two levels the market may bottom, okay? This is one of it. This is the EMA 200, okay, EMA 200. Uh, a lot of people use this reference for long-term investing, okay? But at here, it already start a strong rebound, yeah, at 380 level. So it may not come down to this level unless there's a more major negative news, okay? Uh, but the volume conviction is not very high yet for this recovery. So the, that means the fund managers are just gradually, slowly stepping in, yeah, which is what I, I would suggest as well. Don't go all in, okay? Because this is not the, uh, may not be the lowest level, but it's already low enough for you to start some early trend and investing, okay? Yeah, so they, and from here to here, it's just another $18. It's not very significant, yeah? As, a, as an investor, not very significant. As a, uh, if you look at daily chart, then it looks higher. Okay, so let me show you the, uh, so these are the two key level. If it breaks this right, then this is the next level. Uh, I don't expect that uh, it will, uh, I mean, to come back to this level, yeah, what it means is uh, you know, we have not factored in what the companies is making for the last two years in terms of growth. So based on fundamental, it should deserve to be higher, right? It's ex it can command a higher price than the pre-pandemic low. Okay, especially for those companies that are not affected by the COVID, like the tech stocks. Okay, that means they can they can be related around here. So that's why I see this as the low point. But when it's a more significant war, it can also break this support. Okay, so this is a strong level. And when I look at the daily chart, right for the last two weeks, I've seen the bottoming effect already. Uh, I posted the chart in our Facebook page, right? Yeah, on the internal Facebook page. So you can see it has already uh, break the downtrend line, right? So, however, we need to watch out for this level. Okay, the EMA 50 is coming and the 200 level, okay? On the weekly chart, it is this level, yeah? This this level is what we need to watch out. If the 
there are more and more players. I, I would say that some of the big funds may start to gradually come back in when they see that they missed the boat here. Okay. But this level, I think it's going to be a strong resistance. Okay, So I don't think it will take off that easily. There will be some sell-off at this level. Maybe this is a strong resistance. But before it can even reach 430, right? we still need to watch out the reaction over here. Right, This may be moving to a higher low. Right, Those of you who have attended our trend trading, uh, it doesn't mean it's a downtrend, but it may form a higher low. Then it can still get back in. Right, So at the start of the early trend reversal, then when it comes to this, then you have to watch out. Yeah? Because this is a weekly EMA uh, 2050 and also coincide with the daily EMA 200. Yeah? Very high chance because especially when the war and the supply chain, I mean, uh, China slowdown is not completely over, unlikely it can take off so much. Understand? Yeah. So I'm seeing the market bottoming here already. Why? For many days, uh, yeah, it uh, cannot go down further and you can see long tail here. In fact, this is the stronger level. Yeah. Why do I see that uh, it has bottomed up? Because first, it never even touched the 380. Yeah. If I round it to 380, it doesn't even touch 380. I like stock to rebound before the strong support. Okay. And over here, can you see it's so far off? It doesn't even come close to test this level. Yeah. As you can see here, most of the time, right, it comes very close to the support. Yeah. Uh, so that's for the last two weeks. And you can see there's a potential higher low level here. Yeah, this is a considered a higher low. Yeah, this one it goes up, comes, it doesn't come back to the same level. Okay, so when it goes above 400, it's already a conviction to go up to me. Yeah, when it goes above 400. The only thing to watch out is the volume is not that significant. It's, it's about 1.4 to 1.5 times the normal, which means uh, the a lot of players are not coming in yet. Yeah, but you can just stagger entry. Okay, so right now I won't suggest you enter here. <laughs> Wait for some pullback, right? Higher low, then you go in, yeah. But you always need to watch out this level and this level for some potential profit taking, yeah. So that's for SPY, uh, and for QQQ, you can see the same thing is happening. Also bottoming up. Okay, two eighty is the the level. Okay, you can see here. I like to use price action, huh? yeah. So there's another resistance coming, right? So don't buy on Monday. Okay, you know, wait for some pullback. And same for the QQQ. Uh, it's very, very close. QQQ because they have penalized more, right? QQQ represent all of the growth stock. It's already on the weekly EMA 200. Right? Just now, before I turn here, I was on a daily chart. You see, I was drawing here. Okay, When I turn it to the weekly chart, it's already at the weekly EMA 200, which is uh, usually act as a very strong support. Okay, Of course, there's another major level here, which is a pre-pandemic high. right? If you break this, then this is the next level to watch out for. Okay, but right now, because of all the valuation are very good already, right? So this is where you can stagger, stagger by, but don't go in one shot, right? Move up stop loss at position, move up stop loss at position. So your every time your exposure is only one percent, yeah, based on what we taught you in the trend trading. Okay, so not sure how many of you uh seen this yet, right? If don't go for P two now, uh, go for pattern three. Yeah? So you can see, right, already uh, break above the downtrend line. Okay, close above. Yeah. So this is already resistant, don't buy near resistance, unless you break above here or form a higher low. Okay, so many of the stocks are in, in, in good shape. I won't cover any stock recommendation, but I will show you how do we know some signs of a stock bottoming. Yeah? I can see here uh, early stage, right, AMD early stage reversal. Why, right? When a lot of negative news already factor in. Okay. And then you see a higher low here. You see? Already close above 100. Just haven't closed above the downtrend line. So you can watch out for all these stocks. Okay. So this is a public forum. I won't go through too many stocks in. I'll watch this. Yeah. Okay. So let me address. I hope you benefit from this. I'm going to address some of the QA. Right. For those of you who have not signed up uh, for our free seminar, this is where you can register the link that was given to you. Right, the next session is 18, June 9.30. If you cannot make it for this, right, then uh, uh, we do have other sessions as well. Yeah? Uh, once a month, sometimes twice a month. Yeah. And the earlier you attend, the better. Right? Because uh, the market is pretty low right now. <laughs> the longer you wait, you may have a higher recovery already. Uh, because it's seldom that you can find so many problems one shot that can cause the market to go down so much. Okay, the biggest crisis is also the biggest opportunity. I can I go through so many of this, so I know the 
at that moment you feel uncertain, right? If you don't go in later, you will regret because you missed the boat. But I don't want you to jump in without knowing what you are doing. So you need to know what you are doing. Okay, so I'm going in very gradually, right? I personally also using uh, options, longer term options to step into some of this. Um, some I still trade in trade. Okay, so if you you can look at a lot of this, uh, it's seldom you can find a depressed price for a lot of the strong tech stock. Look at it, it's 160 down to about 85, right? It's almost half down, right? Okay, almost half down, even for Apple. Right. Uh, Apple is not that weak, mainly because uh, the it was still earlier quite positive. It didn't it didn't drop that much, yeah, because the demand was still there. Okay, uh, so I would say that uh, the uh, Apple is not the best deal yet unless it recover higher. Okay, yeah, so just want to show that uh, I look at the overall big picture for QQQ. Okay, so if you have attended our webinar, we actually show you all the different investing style. So let me answer some questions. Uh, Terence, is there anyone that I need to address? I see so many, so I may not be able to scroll back so far. All right, so if you have posted a question and I miss it, just post it right now. Uh, why our power money creating energy? Okay, so there is uh, a few things here I'd like to mention. Right, first is... Um, do not let go of growth stock, although they are the most risky earlier. Uh, but now the the risk has been lessened because the valuation is lowered. Okay, so it's a good mix of commodities, growth stocks, and some consumer staples. Consumer staples was also penalized a lot lately, right? So this mix of stocks, at least when the supply chain constraint relief, right, your the growth stock will go up. But if the world persists, then you still have commodities, right? And if the recession happen in other parts of the world. Right, US unlikely, but for the rest of the world, then consumer staples will still do well. Okay, consumer staples are those conservative stocks like uh, you know Procter and Gamble, uh, you know Costco and so on. Yeah. So you you need to have a mix. Don't go for just commodities. Right. If you go for just commodities, then what if the uh, the oil price start to you know peak? Right. Then it doesn't have a lot of room to go up because it's already very high right now. Uh, then when it comes to uh, if you avoid growth stock then you can also miss the boat when it comes to the recovery of supply chain. Okay, so that's where uh, you need to have a combination of this. Right, so if you know intraday skill, then it's fine, right? You can trade up and down. All right, Terence, uh, that's all I have. So I'll address some quick Q&A. Yeah. Um, there's not much Q&A. I think most, most of the people here are our graduates. So I think they, they understand mm -hmm. uh, what you have mentioned. There was this this uh question I saw way way earlier about gold, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I know a lot of people. Oh, okay. It's gold there's a lot of saying that you know, in, in a recession, gold is a safe haven, right? So I think uh, I want to know. Okay. So yeah. one of, one thing I want to highlight: gold is no longer a safe haven. I look at gold chart. Uh, the the correlation already detached when cryptocurrency comes in. Okay, it doesn't mean the cryptocurrency is a good hedge as well, right? So let's look at gold uh, gold trend. Right. Uh, what do you consider a good hitch? Right. Let's look at beginning of this year, year to date, right? Year to date. Beginning of this year, stock price came down. Okay, but let's let's look at what happened to gold. <laughs> gold come down as well. Okay, so it, it doesn't help uh, to balance your portfolio. Okay, let's look at SPY. SPY came down since beginning of the year. Right. This is a year to date chart. Right. And in this period, um, I can show you uh, Correlation chart. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, QQQ. Uh, what's this? The GLD. Okay. So the this blue line. I'm just looking at the year to date. Right. Um. Okay. Okay. The blue line is uh, QQQ, right? So it came down, right? Whereas gold was just flat flat right so it doesn't go anywhere uh gold does well when it comes to usually in the past uh, right because uh based on the past 29 years i've seen different correlation with gold it used to be when there's a crisis uh gold will go up so i'll show you during the u.s financial crisis like this is uh let me change the gold color to gold okay <laughs> that's easier too this looks like gold right yeah yeah so this is gold yeah, so during this uh, US financial crisis here, right, can you see the, the recovery, stock market recover here. 
Yeah. So when stock market recover, this also go up. Then after that, it came down. Yeah. Uh, during this period, it also gold also came down here. One of the reason is USD shot up. Yeah. Usually, usually in big crisis, US dollar will shoot up. So this good for our US investment account, right? Our U US dollar broker account because the uh, US dollar actually shot up a lot. Yeah. So let me just show you. You can actually plot in the uh, trading view. Yeah. Can you see? US dollar versus Malaysia ringgit. Yeah. So I, uh, I have actually my lines here. Yeah. You can see here. It actually shot up. I didn't update the price rate because it's too bullish. <laughs> okay. You can see that uh, it went up to 4.4. Okay, so not good for our import. Huh? Okay. Uh, and the dollar index, DXY. This is a US dollar against a basket of currency it has been going up a lot. Okay, recently it's, it started to come down and that's why I think the uh, uh, the market could be bottoming. Uh, mainly because it's aligned, uh, multi things, multiple uh, senior aligned. So the SPY and QQQ shows early stage recovery. Uh, the dollar start to uh, come back down. And at the same time, the, the gold price also start to um, go sideways. Okay, so some of you are asking whether uh, is uh, is it time to go to Bitcoin? I won't cover Bitcoin. Okay, but I just want to show you if you look at this right, Bitcoin is still the chart is still bearish, whereas the SPY QQQ is recovering. Understand? Yeah. So SPY QQQ is uh, much healthier than the Bitcoin. You can see it's probably a triangle breakdown <laughs> soon. Okay, it broke the thirty thousand level, which is a bad sign. Yeah, same for the Ethereum as well. My intention not to cover this, uh, just, uh, just as a question. You can see it broke the triangle breakdown. It's not healthy, right? Broke 2000 level. Right? So overall, the sentiment for cryptocurrency is not good. Okay, Compared to the, there could be a few reasons. Uh, valuation for stock price is, it could be a, what we call an asset rotation. Okay, so I covered the overall, how, how funds, there are three ways the funds move. Okay? This is more advanced level. If you're interested, you can go for the, uh, macro insight. So let me just draw it here. Uh, let me share another screen. Okay. There are three types of rotation. Okay, one is between asset class. Okay, the other one is between sector or industry. The other one is between countries. All right, so what we have seen so far is uh, what do we mean the sector industry? I mean, it's from, uh, let's say, the growth stocks, right, to energy stocks. Uh, uh, like those are sector rotation, right? Asset class is uh, between, uh, let's say, stocks, right? To bonds, right? To commodities, commodities, uh, sorry, I'm spelling too fast, or to uh, currency, right? Currency can be the digital currency or the uh, forex currency. So, uh, so how do funds move is is uh, another subject by itself. Okay, so if you're interested on all this rotation, because if you know, then you know how the big picture move. So I'm seeing some rotation uh, out from the crypto back into the stock market, okay, and out of the currency funds to stock market because uh, asset usually move to the 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 one that has shown a greater value, okay, right now rather than the one that is already stretched, right? They will start to take profit and move to the other one. And of course, there are many other factors like interest rate differential and so on. Okay, between countries, usually it's based on interest rate differential. Okay. Okay. So if you are, uh, you are interested in that, it will benefit you a lot. Uh, can join our macro insights course. Okay. Okay. So that's about it. Any other questions I need to address? When no, will we BI have... start back physical <laughs> class? <laughs> Darren, you want to oh, answer? Yeah, that? yeah we're planning. Planning for that, uh, Heng Fat. I know we, we miss seeing all of you physically too. So so we're planning for that. So wait, wait for the announcement. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there, there's that. Okay, last, really last question. Oh, I, I see two two person asking about Taiwan and China now, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that China is looking at what, what uh, Russia is doing to Ukraine. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think uh, China, short answer is China will wait and see what will happen to, what happened to Russia, Ukraine first. Yeah, I don't yeah, think they so, will take action. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, if, if they really do, then, then, you know, you, you can all learn from, you know, how, how, uh, how it plays out, right, between Russia and Ukraine. Um, you, you look at what, you know, for example, what commodities are affected, uh, how commodities are affected, and you can you can pretty much use that as a model to also uh, uh, kind of forecast what will happen if a war between China and Taiwan really, really breaks out. All right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, we, I, uh, I do have a lot more slides that I hide here <laughs> because there's not enough time. That will take uh, three hours to update. So I will cover the rest in the uh, Q2 market update. Yeah. I cover what is urgent right now for the market recovery. Mm. Right, so do come for our Q2 uh, market update in June. Uh, let me double check the, the date so you can block your time. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite soon. Uh, yeah, so if you are our graduate, uh, do make sure you join the uh, market update we provide for our graduates. Uh, if you have, if you are not a Beyond Insights student or graduate yet, uh, come and join our seminar. Find out for yourself the system that we use, uh, mm -hmm. the system that we have taught our students uh, for them to be able to um, you know replicate the success that. Uh, we ourselves and many of our students have been uh, doing. All right. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, our students uh, market update Q two market update will be on nineteenth of June. Right. You should have seen the invitation uh, that was sent out yesterday. Okay. So Q two mark uh, is called Q two market sharing. Uh, two to five p.m. It's a Sunday. Sunday nineteen June. Yeah. Two to five p.m. So that's about it. Um, All right. So, um, you know, thank you so much for staying back with us. We also want to thank uh, Kathleen. This is supposed to be a one hour session, but she has took uh, an additional 30 minutes uh, just to make sure that we address all your uh, questions and concern. Um, so just want to wrap up again uh, by, you know, repeating Kathleen's famous quote, right? You can always find certainty within the uncertainty, right? So with, with, uh, with the knowledge, uh, you have, you will do something, take action, uh, and still benefit from any situation. All right. So uh, that will be all for this uh, this session. And if you if you believe that this session has benefited you, you can forward this right forward forward this to your uh, to your friends uh, so that they can also benefit from it. Okay. So if you like it, please leave a, leave a comment as well so that you know we'll do more uh, sessions, public sessions like this in the future. Uh, till we meet again. Uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and happy investing and trading. All right. Take care for now. Bye-bye.